What's going on guys? We have an incredibly special monument to work on today. It's a cradle grave. It's the grave of an infant that I just discovered here. It's been sitting unassembled on top of the headstones of what I believe are his parents sitting inside of this, this plant material and it's not in place. It's not where it should be. So, so we're gonna spend some time getting this put back together just especially for this infant. <laughs> What's so interesting about this is I was just walking through the cemetery. I actually had no idea this was here. And I just looked over from the road and I saw some monuments that looked out of place and they were actually hidden underneath this growth. I actually don't know what this is. So if you know what this is, certainly let us know in the comments, but there was some stones that just looked out of place. And then I realized that we had some really important pieces. I believe this is the foot. This is the headstone right here. It's fractured, you can see this. But the telltale sign for me was this. It's a pillow. It says darling. And then we have the rails right here. Like I said, this is literally a cradle grave and it's just been sitting there. I imagine most people didn't even know this was here. I did check with the cemetery and they said it goes right, right over here, right next to his parents, or I believe his parents. So now that we've got the spot, we just got to measure and then excavate out here and then get this cleaned up and reassembled. It'll be a little bit of a process, a lot of different pieces here, but this is super exciting to be able to get this taken care of. I can't say for sure, but I'm thinking that this is part of it. This is white marble and there's nothing else that's white marble around here and it's just sitting here in the ground. This is honestly amazing. This is really an amazing find. It fractured, it broke, um, but we can, we can handle this. We can put this back together. Given that we're gonna need to repair this fracture, let's do that first and let's get everything cleaned up so that way everything has a chance to dry and set up before we start getting this back in the ground. Because the stone is fractured, if we don't spend the time cleaning these surfaces that we're going to rebond with an epoxy, this isn't going to have a chance of surviving again for another generation. So we need to make sure that we spend as much time as possible cleaning these surfaces so that we can have the best success possible for the future of this stone. Future Wade here, and I did my normal genealogy work, and it's a family that's buried here. It's not just the infant. So it's William Stanley Feichel that is the cradle grave. His older brother Hiram is the stone directly next to it, and then we have his parents, Joel and Margaret Feichel, that are buried. There's four of them right here in this plot. The good thing about these crib rails is that they were sitting on top of his parents' headstones. And because of that, they weren't in the ground attracting moisture and sort of disintegrating. Um, the way that we're gonna set this up is gonna be on um, a bed of gravel and it'll help with drainage and it'll help this last longer. Um, but if this was buried in soil, we would have had problems where this would have started to sugar and deteriorate a little bit more just from the moisture getting into the stone. And so luckily, um, these were sitting mostly um, upright, at least, at least the rails. These are the most fragile pieces here. They're very long and very thin. There's just something really special and unique about these, these cradle graves. The fact that they are so delicate in their nature, the fact that they're for a very young child, a baby, there's just so many different pieces here that, that mean so much. And so it's just really special to be able to work on something like this. It's rare to be able to have the chance to, to work on something like this um, in the condition that it's in, um, that it needs to be restored and put back in place. And, 
and to, to know that this will be a, a monument that sits right next to his parents for hopefully a very long time. We've got to make sure that this cradle has a good base to sit on, and so we're going to use this permeable foundation to lay this on. So we're going to get this kind of measured out, want to rough it in so I can dig down and get this base set in place. This family has a really great story, and his dad, Joel, he was an Ohio farmer, and at the age of 20, he enlisted for three years of military service at the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861. He was serving with the Ohio Infantry, where he served as a commissary sergeant, and he was one of the regiment's non-commissioned staff who coordinated the food distribution, the food rations for the soldiers. I had the cemetery tell me exactly where this should go. And I think we're exactly on that spot because what I'm hitting here, I believe, is parts of the monument. Certainly in cemeteries, you'll see instances where you'll have rock and so forth underground, but this is, this is white marble, the same as that. It seems to be buried, so we'll see what's down here. It's not very big, whatever it is, but it tells me that I think we're on the right track. Yep, exactly what we found. So this is exactly where it was. This is perfect, this is awesome. Very excited about this, so proof. And that's part of what broke off, so we're in good shape. By 1870, Joel was with his brother working in Iowa as a carpenter, and that became his lifelong career. But he still had an important connection to Ohio because he had a true long distance girlfriend his future wife, Margaret, who was still living there. And they were married Christmas Day, 1871 in Hocking County, Ohio. It's a metal, it's a rod down in here. You can see this right here. Maybe not the plot, but the, the row that we're in. So I was told just north of this stone, which is that direction, which is here. So we found remnants of the stone. We found that, we're in really good shape. Because of its structure, the rails is very delicate, and so we need to have a good strong base underneath it. So we're gonna use this crushed stone and then a permeable base. What we don't want happening is the rails to lift too far out of way. A year after the couple was married, they had their first child while they were in Holton, Kansas, which is where Joel's sister lived. They had a second child that was born back in Ohio two years later. In 1880, the family was living in Annapolis, Indiana, where Joel continued his carpentry work and where William was born. Sometime after 1880, the family made their final move to Iowa, where Joel built many houses, even on the street that I live on and the First Baptist Church was built by him, as well as other churches in the area. And in doing this, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm repairing the stone of a carpenter's child, and I'm wondering what he thinks of my craftsmanship, because I can look around in the houses in the area, and they're gorgeous. So I kind of wonder what, what Joel would think. It's another day out in the cemetery and I made an amazing discovery while I was gone. Remember yesterday when we were digging here to get this base set in place? We found a couple of these pieces. We found four pieces. One, two, three, four. This right here is a lynch piece right there. Look at that. It fits perfectly right there. And now we have a big missing piece for this headstone. That is so amazing. Oh.
typically when I'm doing these bond repairs, this stone is actually down in the ground and secured. This one is up, and so I need to make a little base for it. So I'm just gonna put a couple boards here to help with this topple effect while I get this bigger piece up here on top. I get asked all the time, how do you do this? What products are you using? And so I made a class just for you to answer all of those questions. Right now it's on a wait list, but if you're watching this video in the future, it'll be out there in live. So check the link in my bio. I've got classes just for you. You can sign up for the wait list right now. Be notified as soon as that comes out. It'll be coming out soon. But if you're in the future, I'm sure it'll be right out there. You can check the link in the bio, sign up for that class today and learn how to do this because ultimately it's gonna take a bunch of volunteers out there just like me to do this. I can't do all this work myself. So if you're interested in cemetery conservation work, take a look at that. So now that I've got this in place, I'm actually going to remove my lower clamp and reclamp this all into one. These rails used to have pins together. This was all, this was all bonded together at one point in time. This pin is missing. Um, you can see some of them that are broken off here in the side. So we know where it goes. This one has actually fractured away, um, but this was actually all held together with pins at one point in time. We're not gonna use pins today. We're just gonna use an epoxy. This pillow has a special inscription on it. It says, bye bye, darling, a parent to their child. I want to give a special thank you to all my Patreons. They are an amazing community that helps support all the work that we're doing here. If you like me taking care of cradle graves just like this, check the link in the description. It'll take you over to Patreon and you can help support all the great work that we're doing here. Really thank you to all the Patreons. You all are the ones that make this actually happen and provide that support to make this work. <laughs>